Kana is a girl who is seriously ill and often entertains herself by playing virtual reality games. On one occasion, the whole city lost power, causing her to die because the ventilator stopped working. However, after regaining consciousness, Kana was surprised to see that her legs could move and realized that she had been reincarnated into the game. She was turned into the game character she created. When Kana goes downstairs, the landlady has already prepared breakfast for her, and Kana feels very happy because it has been a long time since she has eaten by herself instead of on the hospital bed. After doing a little research, Kana was surprised to learn that this place belongs to the kingdom of Felscalo because this is a new kingdom that has never existed in the Leedale game. She realizes that this world is the future of that game, 200 years later. Having just returned to the room, Kana opens the character status panel to check her stats. Name, Kana. Level 11 -0. Race, High Elf. Title, Skill Master No 3. Kana wonders if her 12 friends are stuck in this world like her. It is just getting dark when Kana uses light magic to light an oil lamp. The landlady's daughter, Lit, was surprised because it was her first time seeing magic. When Kana goes down to the dining room, she sees a lot of people gathered here for dinner, looking very happy. The landlady prepared an extremely delicious meal for her. Kana is planning to find her base in the game, called Silver Tower. When everyone learned of her intentions, they were very scared because that place was the residence of the Silver Ring Witch, who was said to be very cruel. People don't know that the Silver Ring Witch is Kana. In the past, Kana used to bully other players, so they gave her that name. The next morning, Kana sets out to find her Silver Tower a little way from town. She uses a Guardian Ring to activate teleportation to the Guardian Tower. The Guardian of Kana's Tower is an NPC shaped like a stone statue. It is very angry because Kana has disappeared and hasn't contacted her for the past 200 years. She says that Kana's son had come here to look for her 60 years ago, which makes Kana very confused because she is still unmarried and doesn't have any boyfriends. However, Kana suddenly remembers that Scargo is an NPC she created. In addition to Scargo, she still has an elf daughter and a dwarf. Soon after, Kana transfers some magic power to the Silver Tower to help her active again. She says that her friend's towers have all been deactivated, so she tells her to reactivate those towers when she has time. On the way back to town, Kana suddenly sees a hunter being attacked by a bear, so she rushes to kick the bear with great strength to rescue the hunter. Kana brought the bear's meat to treat everyone in town. That night Kana had a good time drinking with them. As soon as she wakes up, Kana feels very dizzy because her alcohol tolerance is quite poor, so she swears never to touch alcohol again. There was a group of merchants from the capital who were attacked by monsters on their way to this town. One of them was so badly injured that no one could save him. Kana goes to the man and uses healing magic to save his life, to everyone's astonishment. The captain of the merchant group, Aline, wants to do something to repay her. When they learned that Kana was looking for her son named Scargo, everyone was shocked because Scargo was a powerful high priest, second only to the king of this Falskalo kingdom. They were even more surprised to learn that she was so young and already had three children. Kana asks Aline to take her to the kingdom's capital. After saying goodbye to everyone in the town, Kana followed Aline's caravan. Upon arriving in the capital, Kana was amazed at the magnificent beauty of this place. Aline takes Kana to an inn owned by him so that she can rest. However, Kana immediately runs to the church because she wants to see her son Scargo again. But the nuns there ask Kana to make an appointment in advance. Kana is walking along the shore when she hears voices coming from the shipyard. When she goes inside, she accidentally meets her youngest dwarf son, Kardats. She gently pats Kardats's head because it has been a long time since she has seen her youngest child. But Kardats was very embarrassed because he was more than 200 years old now and not a child anymore. Immediately after that, Kana goes to the city's guild hall to submit an application to be an adventurer. Her first quest is to provide a healing potion to someone, so she pulls out a pink potion of her own to complete the quest. As soon as she came out of the guild hall, a man and a girl suddenly approached her. The two of them want to ask Kana to help find a boy who is the prince of this kingdom. This night, Agato kept winking at Kana, which made her feel very uncomfortable. Agato sends a girl named Lonti with Kana to find the lost prince, and they are surprised to see the prince climbing on a clothesline to catch a cat. But the boy suddenly slips and is falling out of the rope, so Kana uses a flying spell on the prince to save him. As soon as he sees Lonti, the prince runs away because he doesn't want to return to the palace. Kana immediately pursues the boy, so he has to row a boat to escape. But the boy panics when he sees Kana running on the water. After capturing the prince, Kana hands him over to Agato and Lonti. Agato gives her a bag of gold as a reward for the quest just now. That night, having just returned to the inn, 
The people here asked Kana to drink with them. Despite vowing to quit drinking, Kana couldn't deny their enthusiasm. Scargo and Mai Mai are very happy to know that their mother has just arrived in this city. Kana goes to ask Aline and his mercenary arbiter for information about her friend's towers. They have seen such a tower in the northern Hellsper Kingdom. Kana has just arrived in the Adventurer Guild, suddenly receives an invitation letter from the Royal Academy. So she asks Lonti to take her to the Academy since Lonti is also a student there. It turns out that her daughter, Mai Mai, is the principal of this academy. Having just met her mother again, Mai Mai began to wheedle, making Lonti extremely surprised. But Kana pushes Mai Mai away because her daughter is now the principal of the academy. Mai Mai takes Kana to meet an alchemist, who is her husband. Her husband thought that Kana was just a young girl, but he did not expect this girl to be his mother-in-law. It turns out that Mai Mai's husband wanted to meet Kana to ask about the healing potion she gave to the Adventurer's Guild because there's no one else in this world who can make such a high-level potion anymore. So he begs Kana to teach him how to make the healing potion. When she returned to the Adventurer's Guild, Kana received an exorcism quest in the arena of the city. She immediately goes to the arena to deal with the ghost. But Kana doesn't know that the prince is secretly stalking her. She summons a three-headed dog to patrol around the place, grills some meat to eat in the middle of the arena, and waits until the ghost appears. But while on patrol, Kana's dog caught the prince hiding in the stands. It turns out the prince wants to follow Kana to investigate why she's so strong. The whole capital knows that she is the mother of priest Scargo and headmistress Mai Mai. The prince lay waiting for the ghost in the arena with Kana until the night. Just then a hazy white shadow appeared in front of Kana, but she saw her guardian ring reacting to the white shadow, and discovered that below the arena is the guardian tower of her friend. Once inside, Kana transfers magic power to a withered tree to help the tower work again. After being fully charged with mana, the tower's guardian appears to greet Kana. Kana learns that her friend left the tower a long time ago, and she realizes that they quit the game because the publisher closed it. The Guardian hands over ownership of the tower to Kana at the behest of her friends. Kana tells the Guardian to stop showing up like ghosts to scare everyone in the arena. However, she was upset and locked herself in the room because her friends were no longer in this world. Agato has told Scargo that Kana has been locking herself in her room for the past few days, so Scargo frantically rushes to the inn to check on her health. However, upon seeing Scargo, Kana was shocked because he was so weird. She angrily punches him, pinning him to the ceiling. Mai Mai called someone to put her brother in a coffin and bring him back to the palace. The siblings discuss among themselves why Kana was so bored. Scargo assumes that he was punched by his mother because the clothes he is wearing are too deplorable, so he transforms into another outfit that looks even more flamboyant. However, Kardatz has just walked out into the street when he sees Kana happily eating barbecue. Turns out she was annoyed because Scargo always used the rose scatter skill like a pervert. Kardatz says that whatever his personality is, he is her son. Kana realizes that although her friends are no longer here, she still has three children who always care for and love her very much. Soon after, Kardatz takes Kana to the palace so she can make up with Scargo. But as soon as she sees him, she kneels to apologize, making Scargo and Mai Mai were very confused. The three of them also apologize to Kana for upsetting her. However, Kana suddenly tells Kardatz to go outside so she can talk to the other two alone. She taught Scargo and Mai Mai a lesson because they always act like kids. The next day, Aline asks Kana to escort his caravan to the Hellsper Kingdom in the north. She agrees because she also wants to find her friend's tower there. Before leaving, Kardatz and Mai Mai also go to the city gate to see their mother off. Mai Mai asks Kana to deliver a letter to a man named Karik in Hellsper. As soon as they got out of the city, they suddenly met a large river blocking the way and the only bridge across this river was destroyed by a storm a few days ago. Kana uses her skills to walk on water to help Aline's caravan cross the river. However, one horse in the group was unfortunately killed by a giant larva in the water, causing the whole group of merchants to stop because of the lack of a cart horse. Kana summons a centaur and a three-headed dog to help them. But as soon as they see these two monsters, everyone is amazed. The centaur doesn't want to work like a lowly horse, so Kana summons a cute giant pig to help them pull the cart. As soon as they arrived at the Hellsper Kingdom's checkpoint, they encountered a group of bandits, 
but the centaur and the three-headed dog quickly destroyed them with great ease. The leader panics and uses his magic tool to shoot a fireball to attack Kana, but unexpectedly, his attack on Kana was like a fly. Kana uses an ice bow to shoot him straight in the body, causing him to shatter. A few days later, everyone finally reaches the capital of the Hellspur Kingdom. But Kana finds it very strange because this place has the cultures of both Asia and Europe. Aline takes Kana to meet a man named Karik to deliver Mai Mai's letter to him. He is the leader of the largest group of merchants in this city. However, as soon as he met Kana, Karik suddenly bowed, making everyone very surprised. It turns out that Karik is Mai Mai's son, as well as Kana's grandson. Karik had suggested Kana stay at his place instead of Porin's, but Kana was extremely angry when her nephew looked down on others. Soon everyone goes to see a female commander named Karina to report on the bandits they encountered. It turned out that Karina was Karik's biological sister, and also Kana's niece, so she quickly apologized to her grandmother for her brother's incorrect way of speaking. Karina also says that her mother once told her that her grandmother was a very cruel witch, so Karina and Karik felt quite nervous when they met their grandmother. When Kana hears about it, she is angry and decides to teach her daughter a lesson for daring to speak badly of her. People think that maybe Kana is as cruel as Mai Mai said, so she gets mad and engulfs them all with a giant snowball. Soon after, Kana goes to Hellspur's Adventurer's Guild to find information about the Guardian Tower. A dragonoid says that there was a Guardian Tower located to the west of Hellspur, but that place was currently being held by a band of bandits, so no one dared to go there. He felt like he had seen Kana somewhere before, but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't remember who she was. Accompanying him was a female adventurer. Kana asks Karik to help her get through the sentry station, because it was extremely easy for a large corporation like his and he didn't want to upset his grandmother, Karik agreed immediately. Karik says that Karina is currently serving as commander at the Western Guard Post, so he asks Kana to transport some goods there for Karina's guard post. The next day, Kana set off very early with a Karik truck. She summons a giant crab to carry her to the guard post. Later that day, Kana delivers the goods to Karina's barracks, but her barracks are suddenly attacked by an army of golems, so Karina quickly orders her soldiers to go out to fight them. However, their swords are completely useless against the golem's steel hard bodies. Seeing that Karina is in trouble, Kana goes out to help her. She uses a lightning spell to attack that causes the golems to turn to ashes in a matter of seconds. But Kana asks Karina to keep the fact that she defeated the golems a secret because she doesn't like being famous. She heads west to find her friend's tower. She suspects that the person who created the golems was definitely a player, and that he might be the leader of bandits roaming the west of this country. The next morning, Kana reaches the tower in the middle of a very large lake, but she suddenly sees a large group of bandits standing by the lake's edge. So she summons earth dragons and lets them chase all the bandits away. Just then, a demon who is the leader of the bandits approached Kana. Kana discovers that this demon is also a level 432 player. But unlike Kana, he only sees this world as a game. Kana pulls a stick like Sun Wukong's to teach this guy a lesson. Just as the demon is about to attack, Kana creates a hole beneath his feet, causing him to fall. After he crawled out of the hole, Kana revealed to him that she was also a player, but because Kana's level was too high, he couldn't see her stats. Kana uses the stick to push the demon back into the hole, and this time she uses ice magic to trap him there. The demon begs Kana to spare his life because he is actually just a boy. However, Kana still decides to end the demon because he is too dangerous for the people here. But Karina suddenly appears and stops Kana because Karina wants to bring him to the capital so that the court can handle him according to the laws of Helsper. Kana thinks it is impossible for someone like Karina to escort this level 432 demon, so she gives him a necklace that reduces his strength by 90%. After making sure he wouldn't pose any danger to her niece, Kana let Karina escort him to the city. Immediately after that, Kana uses the Guardian Ring to teleport into the guard tower in the middle of this lake. She infuses magic power into a throne in order to get the Guardian here working again. The Guardian of this tower is an extremely arrogant skeleton. She gives Kana the tower's Guardian Ring along with a strange book. Her owner told her to give these to Kana when she got here, but Kana is surprised to find that inside the book is a tiny fairy. After helping her friend's tower become active again, Kana quickly leaves. This little fairy refused to speak, so Kana has no idea what this little girl is like. Having just returned to the capital of Hellspur, the two grandchildren give her a bag of gold because she defeated the dangerous bandits, but she still wants them to keep the fact that she was the one who defeated them. 
She is very much looking forward to returning to Falskalo to punish Mai Mai for daring to speak badly of her. The next day, Kana followed Aline's caravan back to the kingdom of Falskalo. Upon returning to Falskalo, Aline invites Kana to join his merchant guild, but Kana declines his invitation because she prefers to work alone. She goes to the adventurer's guild to take a bear hunting quest for the restaurant. As Kana is leaving the guild, a male adventurer seems to have recognized her. Kana is just going out when she suddenly sees Lonti with a girl named Mai coming to meet her. It turned out that Lonti wants Kana to escort her and Mai out of this city. Kana realizes that Mai is the princess of Falskalo who wants to go out. However, Kana still agrees to escort Mai and Lonti and take them on a bear hunt with her. Kana uses magic to push the trees aside so that they can more easily enter the forest. That night, everyone has a campfire inside the forest to eat dinner together. But these two children show fear when they see Kana summon a three-headed dog to guard them. The two girls are surprised to learn that Kana is hunting a one-horned bear. Soon after, Kana uses earth magic to design a hot spring bath. During the chat, Kana realizes that Mai has feelings for Scargo. Lonti and Mai are shocked to see Kana summon a white dragon, but Kana says that the dragon is not dangerous because it is her summoned beast, so she uses it as a bed. Mai says that every time she goes out, she has to be accompanied by bodyguards, so this is the first time she can go out and spend the night camping like this with friends. Lonti also tells Mai that her younger brother was once captured by Kana in one of his escapes. The next morning, Kana easily defeated a bear, much to Mai and Lonti's astonishment. It took a team of knights to defeat the bear, while Kana could defeat it with just one hit. Kana puts the bear in an item chest to bring it to the city. Meanwhile, the captain of Falskalo's knights goes to the adventurer's guild to find Kana. An adventurer recognizes the captain as a player named Shining Saber. It turns out that the adventurer Coral was also a player from the same guild as him. But after entering the game, the members got lost. Mai Mai's husband is trying to learn how to make high-level healing potions according to Kana's method. But no matter how many times he does it, he can't make that high-level potion. When dumping the potion into the landfill, a strange reaction suddenly occurred and turned the trash there into a giant penguin. After defeating the one-horned bear, the fairy tells Kana to return to the city. Looking at the fairy's attitude, Kana realizes that the city is in danger, so she summons a white wolf to drive the group back to the city immediately. Meanwhile, the monster has started attacking the people inside the city. Shining Saber states that this penguin is an event boss in the game, so they will need 200 players at level 300 to defeat it. Right after that, Shining Saber and Coral charge at the penguin but the monster easily defeats them with a simple slap. They stand up to continue the battle when a rock crashes into the face of the monster. Scargo is glad to hear that Kana is back. Kana creates a lightning that contains tremendous power to burn the monster, but she doesn't want to be famous, so she casts that spell from quite a distance. Kana realizes that the monster has appeared because Mai Mai's husband's healing potion reacted with some of the ingredients in the landfill. She asks Mai Mai not to let anyone near this dump because she is afraid that bad guys will use it to create monsters. After the monster was defeated, Scargo gave Mai Mai a rare metal drop from the monster. But Kana's equipment is already full, so she doesn't know what to use it for. She decides to make Coral a sword because he also helps fight the monster. The next day, Coral and Shining Saber reveal to Kana that both of them are players, and they are surprised to learn that Kana was a member of the Green Cheese Guild because that guild is made up of members who have the same power as the administrators in the game. But they are even more surprised to learn that Kana was the Silver Ring Witch. Kana gives Coral the sword she has promised to make for him. Coral and Shining Saber are surprised because it is one of the most powerful weapons, so Shining Saber is very jealous and begs Kana to make him a sword like Coral's. Soon after, Kana asks the two young men to befriend her for convenience. She asks them for information on the locations of the other towers. Coral has pointed out to her the location of a strange palace located on the bottom of the sea nearby. The next day, Kana returns to her guardian tower to visit the guardian. Kana also makes her way to visit Lit in the town she was in when she first came to this world. When Lit sees Kana again after a long separation, she and her mother are overjoyed. So Lit's mother decides to throw a party to welcome Kana. But the next morning, Kana is extremely tired from having to drink with everyone all night. While walking around town, Kana suddenly saw people talking about something. Turns out they occasionally hear singing coming from the town's well, so Kana decides to go down to the well to check it out. Soon after, Kana summons a pair of water spirits to guide her down the well. She prepares herself with a tight wetsuit so that she can easily move in the water. As soon as she jumped into the well, the water spirit duo quickly led the way for Kana. 
After swimming for a while, Kana found a large cave deep in the well. She is amazed as soon as she sees a beautiful mermaid in the cave. But the mermaid suddenly kneels before the two water spirits of Kana because, in mermaid culture, the water spirits are their guardian deities. The mermaid named Maimali says that she got lost in this place during a long outing. When asked by Kana, Maimali couldn't remember what sea her home was in, so Kana suggested that she live with the people of the town above for a while. Kana then takes Maimali out of the well and explains the whole thing to the people. The villagers happily prepare a tank in the public bath for Maimali to live in. Having just solved the problem, Kana wants to return to the capital, much to Lit's sadness, but Kana says she can return to this place at any time with teleportation. The next day, as Shining Saber leads his troops out of the capital to suppress a group of bandits, he accidentally meets Kana while searching for the undersea palace mentioned by Coral before. Shining Saber invites Kana to go with him because he is also going to pass where she wants to go. However, seeing that Kana has no horse, Shining Saber picks her up and sits with him. Seeing this, the other knights think that the two of them are dating. That night, everyone stops to camp on the road and has a very enjoyable dinner. After being cooked by Kana for a delicious meal, the knights are extremely happy because Shining Saber had only given them hard bread when they marched. Kana passes on his cooking skills to Shining Saber so that he can cook for his men. A few days later, Kana reaches the location of the palace that was supposed to be the Guardian Tower. She sees a seaside fishing village mysteriously shrouded in fog. She summons the centaur so that he can help her fight. However, as soon as he stepped inside the foggy village, the centaur's HP suddenly dropped extremely quickly. Someone rushes to attack the centaur, causing him to disappear. Kana realizes that the person who attacked him was a zombie. Kana also sees that all the people living in this fishing village have been turned into zombies. She thinks that this fog may be the reason why they are like this. Right after that, she encounters an adventurer she has met in Helsper, but she discovers that this female adventurer is also a level 430 player. She brings Kana to meet her friend, who is also a player like them, and he senses that Kana must have been extremely high level. Turns out his name was Tartarus, who was once a member of Kana's guild. Tartarus is also a high-level mage like Kana in the Green Cheese Guild. But before he was reincarnated, he played a second character, so now he is as weak as a dog. Tatarus says that the fog has the ability to turn people in this world into zombies, but it doesn't seem to have any effect on players like them. Tatarus, along with Qualke, saved a little girl who was the last survivor of the village. Kana pulls out two bells to summon the butlers, making Tatarus gasp in surprise, because these two bells are the reward for those who have played more than 20,000 hours, so Kana must have played the game a lot. Immediately after that, Kana uses a bell to summon a male butler named Roxilius to take care of the little girl. Kana and the other two will go out to find out what is going on in this place. When they reach the beach, the group accidentally encounters a cursed pirate ship. Everyone quickly realizes that the monsters on the ship had created the fog, so they jump on the boat and destroy them all to clear the fog. After the pirate ship was destroyed, the fog surrounding the fishing village also disappeared. Kana was quite saddened by the heroic sacrifice of the centaur she summoned. But Tataros tells her that if the summoned beast disappears, it only takes 10 days to summon it again. That night, the little girl named Luca they saved woke up. Luca now has no relatives left, so Kana decides that she will adopt Luca. The next morning, Kana summons a dragon and dives into the sea to find the Guardian Tower. She quickly finds a tower in the shape of a palace located here. Kana teleports inside the Guardian Tower and transfers mana to reactivate it. However, when she learns that the guardian here is a giant frog, she is extremely scared because she is very afraid of slimy creatures like frogs. So she quickly takes the guardian ring from the frog and leaves the tower immediately. Once back on the coast, Kana offers to befriend Tataris and Qualke. She uses her teleportation to help them get back to Helsper, and she also adopts Luca. She takes Luca to the capital of Falskalo to introduce her to her three children but she wants to bring Luca back to the village area to raise her better. Scargo was overjoyed to the point of glowing when he found out he had just had another sister, but Kana forbade Scargo from using those flashy spells. Kana tells Luca that Scargo is a good brother, even though he's a bit weird. Kana takes some materials from Kardatz's workshop to build a house in the town. She also goes to say goodbye to Aline and Arbiter's mercenaries. Aline has asked Kana to go to one of his stores to buy some supplies for her new house, and Aline's wife is more respectful to Kana knowing she has helped her husband, so she gives Kana a good carriage so that she can transport her belongings easily. 
When she returns to the inn, Kana wants to find someone more suitable than Roxilius to take care of Luca. Roxilius suggests that Kana summon his friend Sai, even though Roxilius strongly hates her. Kana listens to Roxilius' suggestion and summons the maid Sai to take care of Luca, but Roxilius and Sai always quarreled because their personalities didn't match, so Kana angrily taught them a lesson. The next morning, Kana summons a wooden horse and puts it into her carriage. They use the carriage to return to Lit's town and plan to live there. Lit and her mother are surprised to learn that Kana has decided to live in their town. Lit and Luca quickly became friends and happily talked because they were about the same age. Mainly also opened a laundromat to wash people's clothes with her water magic. Lit's mother has suggested throwing a party to celebrate Kana's arrival. But Kana is terrified because she doesn't want to be drunk anymore. The next morning, Kana continues to feel dizzy after a drunken party with the villagers, so Sai reprimands Roxilius for going with Kana without stopping her from drinking. Everyone is talking when Lit suddenly rushes over to tell Kana some good news. The people in the town have found a suitable plot of land for Kana to build a house on, but Kana panics when she learns that they want to throw a party to celebrate finding the land for her. The next day, Kana works on the blueprints and starts building her new home. She summons an earth spirit to help her build the foundation for the house. She then uses magic to build the upper part of the house out of wood piles from Cardas. After the house was built, everyone went inside to see the interior, and Kana designed a very spacious living room and bedroom for everyone. People in the town are very surprised because, in just a moment, Kana has finished building a house. They also give Kana flowers to decorate her house. On the occasion that Kana has just finished building the house, they want to organize another party. That night, while taking a hot bath, Mimely tells her that she doesn't want to go back home because she doesn't have any special abilities and is often looked down on by other mermaids. In this place, the people attach great importance to her ability to do laundry with magic. After building the house, Kana starts her new life in this world, and she feels very happy to be living peacefully with her friends.